Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Deputy Chief Editor of Bulletin of Chinese Academy of Sciences, Yang Liuchun. Bulletin of Chinese Academy of Sciences, Institute of Science and Development of Chinese Academy of Sciences, and the Chinese Association of Development Strategy Studies, co-host with CNKI as the organizer. The video broadcast lectures on theory and methodology of think tank. Our first speaker is the president of Institute of Science and Development (CAS) and doctoral supervisor Pan Jiaofeng. Professor Pan Jiaofeng is also the co-director of China Innovation Strategy and the Policy Research Center, funded by Research Office of the State Council and the CAS, chairman of the Chinese Association of Development Strategy Studies, and etc. Has one of the national talents of 100 million talent project, and was awarded the honorary title of young and middle-aged experts with outstanding contributions. He has long been engaged in the research on science and technology, strategic planning, innovation policy, and think tank theory and methodology. He has led over 50 national research projects involving decision making, policies, and strategies, and has achieved a batch of influential outcomes. He has presided over the formulation of important reform plans for the Knowledge Innovation Program of CAS, and participated in national SNT planning, emerging industry planning, research on national SNT system reform, research report drafting of SNT strategy, and the formulation of policies and regulations. He has led the writing of over 200 research reports, policy recommendations, and academic articles, and co-authored or chief edited more than 10 monographs. Besides, he proposes the basic logic system and the ideas of think tank research during the development of think tanks worldwide. From a methodological point of view, most think tank outputs in the early stage are generated from the consulting needs of the government and the market. The knowledge, experience, insight, and judgment of strategies or experts play a decisive role. With the increasing complexity of political, economic, and social problems, as well as the Professionalization and institutionalization of think tanks. Think tank outputs need to integrate a wide range of knowledge and expert opinions. So many research approaches, such as Delphi method, have been developed. However, these approaches, mainly relying on expert interviews or consultations, are relatively subjective. In highly information and data-oriented modern society, objective data are playing an increasingly important role in social development and the scientific research. Then, scientific approaches that combine data analysis with expert consultation can provide a more complete understanding of the context for think tank outputs to generate and achieve high-level integration of data, information, experts, and solutions. Compared with the methods merely based on experts or data, the data, information, intelligent solution as a logical system for think tank research. Allows more diverse scientific and rigorous recommendations for decision making. Obtaining information through data analysis and combining experts' advice to get a plan can offer clearer outputs, stronger conviction, and a better use of think tank research results. Based on such thinking and research logic, Professor Pan Jiaofeng led many researchers and graduate students from institutes of science and development. To build a research group dedicated to this theory and the methodology in think tanks, the three years of research has witnessed a series of results. They, for the first time, systematically proposed the basic logic system of think tank research, developing the this 3D theoretical model and the this theory and methodology for multi-scale think tank issues. And the this has been applied to the practice of think tank research. Now, let's welcome Professor Pan Jiaofeng to deliver the lecture on basic logic system of think tank research. Thank you for the introduction, and welcome to the first lecture on theory and methodology of think tank. This series of lectures aim to promote our national think tank in a scientific and standardized way. The Institute of Science and Development is one of the first batch pilot national top think tanks in China. In 
the central government decided to establish the first batch of national top think tanks, and CES was identified as one of the pilot agencies to build a comprehensive think tank that directly serves the central government. For the pilot project of think tank construction, CES established the Institute of Science and Development as a legal entity. After over four years of efforts, we have gained significant understandings of theory and practice of think tank construction. We have refined and summarized such knowledge and experience to obtain the laws of think tank construction. And today, I'd like to share those laws with you. I will talk about basic logic system of think tank research. The milestone in the construction of China's think tank is the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee held in November 2013, which put forward that the overall objective of comprehensively deepening reform is to improve and develop the system of socialism with Chinese characteristics and promote the modernization of our national governance system and capacity. The modernization of national governance system and capacity is of great significance. It is called the fifth modernization of our country because it extends from the economy and society to the institutional level, providing institutional guarantees for the modernization of China. In this meeting, decisions of the CCCPC on some major issues concerning comprehensively deepening the reform explicitly stated that we will strengthen the building of new types of think tanks with Chinese characteristics and establish the consultation system on decision-making. So the think tank construction in China has witnessed a new chapter, and it has become a supporting force for the modernization of China's governance system and capacity. Globally, think tanks play a crucial role in the governance of countries. According to the 2019 Global Go-To Think Tank Index report released by the University of Pennsylvania, there have been more than 8,000 think tanks in the world by 2019. From all continents, Europe had the largest number, with more than 2,200, accounting for 27%, and then North America, 25%. From a national perspective, the U.S. had 1,871 think tanks in the world, followed by India and then China. The numbers in China and India were very close, but the number of think tanks in China was only less than 30% of that in the U.S. The number of think tanks in our country has been rising rapidly in recent years, especially after the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee in 2013 proposed to build new think tanks with Chinese characteristics. Think tank construction has been developing fast. With the number increased from over 430 in 2015 to 507 in 2019. In fact, modern think tanks rise from the West. In the late 19th century, Modern think tanks appeared in the West. In view of think tank research, the research is mainly an empirical study, which mainly takes the think tank itself as the research object. And the content is mostly based on the Western countries represented by the US and their specific national situations. The historical background of the rise of think tanks in the West, as we know, is that at the end of the 19th century, the world was facing a new great development and change. At this point, countries need think tanks to provide suggestions, including new ideas, viewpoints, and advice. To occupy a leading position in global development with the intellectual support of think tanks. After the 1990s, countries of Central Eastern Europe and Asia began to develop think tanks. When the Cold War ended after the 1990s, and globalization entered a period of rapid growth. Countries of Central Eastern Europe and Asia stepped into a new stage of development. This urgently requires think tanks to provide intellectual support. So these think tanks are transnational and supranational organizations. Their study content is still about what is a think tank, its function, and how does it work. From the recent Western situation, 
the theoretical research of think tanks mostly adopts the perspective of pluralism and elitism. Thinking deeply about the definition and function of think tanks to address the questions of what is a think tank, whom does it serve, and how does it work, that is solving problems of identity. Overseas theoretical research of think tanks is mainly in the context of Western political systems, and think tanks cannot be separated from its social and political environment. Different theoretical perspectives focus on varied aspects of a think tank. Then systematic thinking is still lacking, which needs to be developed to grasp the logic of think tank research as a whole. It is of great significance to think tank construction. Regarding China's think tank construction, the related research literature first appeared around 1980s. Since 2013, one new think tanks with Chinese characteristics were proposed in the central document. The number of think tanks has been growing dramatically. Therefore, the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee in 2013 is generally considered as a milestone in the evolution of China's think tanks. From current China's think tank research, understanding and introducing think tanks at home and abroad are important contents, also including tracking hot topics and improving domestic think tank construction. Overall, innovative research methods and tools of think tanks have not yet been formed, and we are mainly studying methods and tools of overseas think tanks. Besides, a strong professional core team and systematic research are still lacking. It means that for think tanks, specialized research organizations need to be improved. Then we need to systematically and innovatively expand think tank theory and develop research methods and tools to guide the construction of new think tanks in China, produce original China's think tank theories, and promote equal dialogue and exchanges with think tanks of other countries. In December 2015. After two years since the third plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee, China launched a pilot project to build top think tanks with the first batch of 25. Such a pilot project is a demonstration to build new think tanks with Chinese characteristics. The 25 think tanks can be divided into four classes. One is directly serving the CPC Central Committee, the State Council, and the Central Military Commission. They are comprehensive think tanks, including ten institutions, such as CAS, Chinese Academy of Engineering, Academy of Military Sciences, Development Research Center of the State Council, the Xinhua News Agency, Party School of the Central Committee of CPC, and other comprehensive institutions. Another class is the professional think tank, depending on universities and scientific research institutions, like Peking University, Tsinghua University, and Renmin University of China. There are also think tanks relying on large state-owned enterprises and those with good social foundation. The 25 pilot units have their characteristics, covering politics, economy, science and technology, and military. Which are all first-class professional research institutes. Such an institutional arrangement can absorb professional suggestions and in-depth thinking from experts and scholars in various fields to effectively promote the modernization of national governance system and capacity. Institutes of Science and Development (CES) is also a pilot unit for the construction of national top think tanks. In the pilot program of national top think tanks approved by the central government, clear requirements are put forward for CAS. The key task of CAS is to build institutes of science and development. So this institute is actually the product of the pilot project of national top think tanks, which is also yield from the exploration of new think tanks with Chinese characteristics. The CAS decides to set up institutes of science and development as a legal entity. After nearly four years' efforts, 
In 2019, China organized a comprehensive evaluation of the 25 top national think tanks involving institutions and mechanisms, service decisions, international and domestic influence, etc. After evaluation, we are very glad to see the Institute of Science and Development CAS come up in front among comprehensive think tanks. Through the pilot project, we are also constantly exploring some basic theories and methods of think tank construction to provide theoretical and methodological support. It involves the purpose of think tank construction, which is a fundamental problem. After the purpose of a think tank is clarified, it can be irreplaceable. That is to clarify the basis of think tank construction and design and the difference between think tanks and other institutions. The second question is what is the difference between think tank research and general academic research? What are the characteristics of think tank problems? Is it the same as general academic research? If they are the same, general academic research will be enough. The characteristics of think tank problems are related to the research objects. The third question is about requirements of think tank research and its characteristics, which enlightens us to think about how to treat think tank research. Is there any rule in think tank research? If so, what are the rules? What principles should be followed? Finally, it's about the evolution of think tank outcomes, because only scientific evaluation can guide researchers to do a better job and promote think tanks to a higher quality. Based on the above situation, we keep practicing while exploring and thinking, and constantly summarize the effective practice. Also, based on international and domestic practices, we perform theoretical thinking. So some effective practices theory basis is further perfected to form the understanding of the logical system of think tank research. This basic logic system answers the questions including why we construct think tanks, what a think tank is, how a think tank works, and how to perform evaluation. For the question of why we construct think tanks, we have known that the fundamental purpose of think tank construction is to support modernization of national governance system and capacity. The question of what a think tank is, is about the objects of think tank research. First, we need to know what is the driving force of think tank research. It is derived from the need of practice. That is the demand for decision making and cognition of trends and laws. Think tank problems, compared with general academic problems, have interdisciplinarity, interconnection, policy practicability, social impact, innovation, and uncertainty. Regarding think tank research with those characteristics, how should the research be conducted? We believe that first is to adhere to three orientations, problem, evidence, and science. The whole process of think tank research is under the guidance of three orientations and with problems as the point cut. It uses scientific methods as tools and means to collect data and disclose information for further comprehensive judgment and solutions. Think tank research highlights ideology, constructiveness, scientificity, foresightedness, and independence. For the principles, the characteristics of think tanks including social impact and policy practicability, determine the five coordinations of ideology and politics, academy and policy, theory and practice, foresightedness and constructiveness, and independence and discipline. Because the results of think tank research affect ideas, strategies, laws and regulations, institutional mechanism, policies, and even specific actions. Evaluation of the results should also be carried out from different aspects. We have an article published in the 10th issue of Bulletin of Chinese Academy of Sciences in 2018. Next around this basic logic system, 
I will share it with you about some research understanding. Modernization of national governance system and capacity for the modernization of our country is a new historical mission. For this purpose, we urgently need a batch of high-level and specialized think tanks to deal with the increasingly complex decision-making problems we are facing now. China has become a middle-income country, moving towards a modernized and upper-income country. In this process, we will encounter many difficulties. Economy and society are huge systems in themselves, and the impact of China's development on the world is enormous, which will cause major changes in the global landscape. Besides, we are in a period of great change not seen in a century. In this context, factors influencing decision-making evolve in many aspects and are in large number. This is why decision-making problems become increasingly complex. It puts an urgent need for specialized researchers to participate in decision-making. But our country still lacks such mechanism which needs to be established urgently to achieve scientific and democratic decision-making. Of course, some existing departments are serving for decision-making consultation such as research offices of different departments in the government. They serve directly for decision makers, and we have many academic research institutions that are engaged in scientific research and analysis from a certain aspect. But professional institutions for think tank research are still lacking. Decision making requires, besides realistic studies, long-term, forward-looking, and future-oriented research. All these call for professional personnel, institutions, and methods. Only in this way can we truly and effectively serve the modernization of our national governance system and capacity. So Think Tank is in response to the modernization of China's governance system and capacity, which is the mission and responsibility and thus the focus of Think Tanks. Our institute is featured by Science and Technology Study, as is known to us, science and technology has now become a key force leading economic and social development. China's modernization depends mainly on science and technology modernization. So in that sense, building world-class science and technology think tanks is a key link in the modernization of our national governance system and capacity, and also a fundamental purpose. Then what is the think tank? Firstly, we need to know where think tank research problems come from. On the one hand, they emerge from decision-making demand, mainly from practice. We should, from the global and strategic views of the development of economy, society, and security, choose major problems. We should research major problems before decision-making, provide solutions and consultation during decision-making and make third-party evaluation after decision-making. Think Tank supports decision-making across the whole process of decision-making and offer optional proposals, scientific advice, and evaluation suggestions to effectively serve macro decision-making, so it serves decision-making directly. On the other hand, they come from the internal logic evaluation of social development because the economy and society develop following their internal logics, and such development cannot be influenced by human will in some aspects. Then we should grasp the internal trend and law, face the future, and predict major problems that may influence development and reform for forward-looking and in-depth theoretical research, in order to reserve counterplans for future problems. On the other hand, Think tanks popularize their understandings and cognition of future development in the society to lead the innovative direction of economic and social development. Think tank research has six characteristics. One of them is interdisciplinarity. Since it needs much information and knowledge, and often covers the comprehensive knowledge of many disciplines instead of a single one, and the research problem is often part of the whole problem of economic and social development. So think tank problems do not exist independently. 
the result of think tank research is practical, which can directly impact the decision making of government and the formulation of public policies, signaling its practicability to policy formation. That's why think tank research is important. The results of think tank research largely influence realistic sectors such as society, ecology, economy, and science and technology development. Meanwhile, the results do not come simply from existing experience. Instead, new ideas should be put forward according to the needs of development. This is why we insist that think tank research should have new thinking. Opinions and ideas. Besides, we have to see uncertainty in think tank research, because it's very complicated, and there are too many changing factors for us to include in our research. That's why things always develop unexpectedly, right? Due to the long period of proposing solutions and their close relations with external environment, think tank research has uncertainty. The six characteristics call for us to come up with new research methods. With these characteristics, our research results can be more scientific. For example, how to see certain aspects in the uncertainty, and how to make use of interdisciplinary knowledge to support think tank research with professional academic research. Interdisciplinarity makes think tank research a crossover study. With many disciplines involved, their interrelations call for us to investigate think tank problems as well as their influence on other aspects. Therefore, the characteristics of think tank problems and research objects require new methods and systematic thinking to solve these problems. The six characteristics can actually be summarized as a convergent characteristic. That involves knowledge in many disciplines and fields, as well as many value chains. Through this picture, we can see the converged disciplines and fields, including science and technology, economy, society, environment, etc., as well as the value chain from the basic frontier to transformation. Think tank research will include many disciplines, fields, and value chains. Then interdisciplinary, multi-field. And multi-value chain think tank problems will be new knowledge to us. In this way, we can obtain comprehensive solutions to complex think tank problems. That's why we call the last link solution. That means problem solving with a systematic connotation. It helps us better understand future trends in science and technology and support macro decision making. With science and technology think tanks as the study object. We notice that science and technology think tank objects are often complicated and comprehensive strategic policy problems, which not only involve science and technology, but also are related to economy, society, environment, and management. Science and technology problems are often interdisciplinary and comprehensively crossed. For example, international science and technology frontier research is a typical think tank problem. Other cases, such as prospective study on major scientific and technological breakthroughs in China, research on source technologies for high-tech industries facing global competition, and research on key bottlenecks of resources and environment in a powerful nation, are also typical problems related to think tanks. Let's talk about international science and technology frontier research. Science and technology is a system covering many disciplines and fields. So it is a comprehensive interdisciplinary research. The research on future science and technology development is steered greatly by demands. So we must consider the demands in the future. Where do demands come from? They come from such aspects as economy, social development, security, and health. Research on demands help us better understand what requirements they bring about. To force us to make new breakthroughs in science and technology. So, in comprehensive judgment of science and technology, we have to think about the system of scientific knowledge of each discipline and the relations of science and technology with other aspects such as economy and society. That's why it is comprehensive. So, are major breakthroughs in China. Major science and technology breakthroughs in China may change the scientific system. 
bring about new industries or create new ways of production and communication. Then we must consider science and technology effects on other aspects. All the problems are complicated and comprehensive, involving many disciplines, fields, and aspects. This is the typical feature of think tank problems, which is different from that of general academic problems. Usually, an academic problem focuses on certain discipline, such as physics, and explores a professional problem in depth. This is the difference. Faced with such problems, what should we do? Also, we should know how a think tank operates and make it play a good role. Think tanks play three roles. First, they serve macro decision making by policy consultation research, that is, research on major problems concerning overall situation. For concerns of the government, they can provide consulting reports, carry out pre-research, that is, evaluating the implementation of programs before decision making, and make independent and objective third-party evaluations. The implementations of decision making programs and policies. Should be evaluated regarding processes and results to provide evidence for optimizing and adjusting policies. Besides the research directly serving decision making, we should conduct forward-looking and future-oriented research by grasping trends and rules and exploring important research topics in time. The U.S. has done a good job in this field with think tanks focusing on a variety of problems. Many problems haven't been concerned, yet the research can foresee future scenarios. Once a scenario occurs, related foresight will immediately influence reality. This is why forward-looking and future-oriented research of think tank is even more important. They can give policy alternatives for the government in decision making. Thus, the government can make decisions immediately. When encountering a problem, instead of resorting to an interim provision, an interim provision for a certain problem will usually fail to yield a satisfying effect. Then, specific implementations include consultation and participation in decision-making research, such as internal reports and studies by participating in decision-making. To provide independent and objective scientific evidence and consulting suggestions, for example, many think tank scholars have attended symposiums organized by the central government, which is a way to participate in decision making by offering policy consultation and suggestions. Internal reports of think tanks also belong to such a case. For example. Helping formulation of key documents is participation in decision making. Second, think tanks should lead the innovation direction, because they have another role that is impacting the whole society. Through scientific concepts, methods, and culture, they can influence the public and promote social progress. With this purpose, for the direction of future science and technology development. We should make forward-looking predictions by releasing public reports and holding seminars. Think tanks are brand new and developing organizations. They should be more and more scientific, because complicated problems should be solved with new tools and methods, which can guarantee or promote the scientificity and authority of think tank research, and strengthen the identity of think tank peers. This can be realized by publishing papers and devising research tools. To bring think tanks into full play and considering comprehensive objects, researchers should, in an all-round and multi-perspective manner, analyze global changes and their possible impact on the economy and society. With regard to science and technology think tanks, their characteristics determine that. Their tasks are specialized and require systematic organization as well as comprehensive integration. Think tank problems are complicated and comprehensive, so we should take a systematic view and decompose a complicated and comprehensive problem into specific science and technology problems interconnected with each other. To make it easier to know the related science and technology problems. 
and fields such as society, economy, policy, and management. Only after decomposition can we organize outstanding experts in corresponding fields to form a research team for comprehensive judgment. Then we should first analyze problems in a systematic view, which is to decompose the problem and make use of our academic research resources. Then a comprehensive perspective should be adopted to analyze problems, to scientifically summarize and comprehensively integrate judgments of experts in science and technology, policies, etc. Because every expert has their ideas. How experts' judgments can be summarized as a consensus to form an overall perception of the problem is a critical new scientific method. Based on that, policy suggestions are given to solve problems. It's a process of regressing a problem and forming a solution. So it's a professional process. Systematical analysis and comprehensive summary need to be effectively organized. So think tank research is a professional task. That needs systematic organization and comprehensive integration. Think tank research follows three orientations. Decision making demands are problems of strategies and policies. They are complicated and comprehensive, which involve many disciplines and fields. Therefore, it is necessary to effectively integrate and summarize relevant subject knowledge. Into the research on national strategic consultation, indicating the scientificity and evidence of think tank research, microscopic academic research greatly explores the development of various disciplines, and can be seen as a source and support for the scientificity and evidence of think tank research. Clear evidence guarantees scientificity. The evidence, academy, and the scientificity are interactive. Therefore, problem orientation asks think tank researchers to analyze through problems, which can be realistic or potential problems related to key strategies and policies. The research can be present or future oriented. Evidence orientation requires arguments to be supported by evidence and objective and convictive facts, rather than general and unrelated things. Objective and scientific evidence and data are a must. Scientific orientation means that think tank research should follow both macro and disciplinary rules. Meanwhile, scientific research methods and tools are used to explore comprehensive and complex problems, scientifically and systematically. These are three orientations. Under which think tank research experiences a comprehensive process, including data collection, information disclosure, comprehensive judgment, and solution formation. Data collection focuses on research problems to gather all the relevant data that are generalized. Such data include not merely numbers, but also others, including images, cases, facts, events, and scientific knowledge. In information disclosure after data collection, the gathered data are professionally mined, collated, and analyzed to generate objective cognition, which is a process of value discovery. For a certain problem, these data are undoubtedly interconnected. These interconnections should be analyzed to form an overall understanding. Thus, information disclosure around a certain problem is value discovery. And lays a solid groundwork for the subsequent comprehensive judgment. The first two steps are objective; data are objective. Information disclosure reveals the internal relation between information or data and their internal values, which are also objective and realistic. Then data collection and information disclosure connect history and reality. Comprehensive judgment also talks about the future, so think tank research crosses the history, the present, and the future. Comprehensive judgment introduces the wisdom of experts that are subjective, compared with the first two objective steps. How to unite subjectivity and objectivity 
is of importance to comprehensive judgment. We should comprehensively collect data in the previous step, because one-sided data will result in one-sided information that may lead to misjudgment or inadequate judgment. Ineffective disclosure of valuable information leads to experts' incomplete judgment. More complete, in-depth, and systematic previous steps can more fully support experts to make a judgment, and they are likelier to be inspired. So it's an iterative process. When experts find new relevant aspects, they will go back and repeat previous steps. Then it is an iterative process that doesn't stop. Until you get a new understanding and new way of thinking, finally, in the face of problems, a solution should be formed. So it undergoes data, information, intelligence, and solution, which is an iterative process. Then DIIS can be understood under three orientations. DIIS is not simply a linear process. Instead, it is an iterative process in a helix structure. From problem orientation, DIIS includes first data collection, which is problem refining here. With disciplinary knowledge combined and the characteristics of problem made clear, problems can then be decomposed into subproblems. In the process of information disclosure, a preliminary solution is formed through the study of subproblems. Problem integration systematically integrates preliminary solutions, all the problems from comprehensive judgment with experts' opinions. Problems are solved through the results of comprehensive judgment to create solutions in different scenarios. There are many uncertainties in the future, and the problems have different development scenarios. How do we solve these problems in such scenarios? This is the DIIS under the problem orientation. Then, for the DIIS under the evidence orientation, in fact, the requirements vary in different links. For example, in the data link, the data must be reliable, authentic, and consistent. The information should be objective, correlated, and timely. Truly professional persons should be involved in the judgment, and the judgment should be comprehensive, but not single or partial. The solution should be feasible, rigorous, and reliable. Under the science orientation, the data should be accurate and it can't be false. The data should be reasonable and complete. Well, in view of the information link, under the science orientation, the information should be comprehensive, practical, and reasonable. In the intelligence link, the judgment should be systematic, independent, and fair. At last, the solutions should be ideological, forward-looking, and scientific. We can see the three orientations and four links are coupled together. It can't be simply understood as a linear process. So that's why we always emphasize that we should analyze the DIIS under the three orientations. Here, we take the strategic research, China's science and technology roadmap of the CAS as an example. This study started in 2007, released in 2009, and then to 2010, has become a systematic strategic study for the diagram of the Innovation 2020 of the CAS. And this strategic study mainly focuses on the realization of modernization in the mid-21st century. CAS focuses 18 important fields and researches on China's science and technology roadmaps to 2050. This study went through a series of steps, such as the determination of 18 fields. What are the areas that have a great impact on future modernization? We should first determine the fields and correctly decompose the problems. And how do we research in these fields? We are going to put the problems together for a comprehensive discussion, or subgroup discussion and subfield discussion. The report is demonstrated circularly after its formation. It should be reviewed independently, not just a team of experts. We also organize other experts to review the results of research to make it more scientific. At last, we can form a suggestion 
to the CPC Central Committee and the reports released to the public. And in this process, the approach of strategic research was also formed, which is the sustainable development of strategy research. In China, it's the first set of panoramic research reports for predicting science and technology development in 2050. And it is also true globally. It's more than 40 years from 2007 to 2050. So the work done by the CAS is very forward-looking and has been widely concerned all over the world. Many viewpoints and research results are accepted by the government's decision-making departments, research institutes, enterprises, and social organizations. We can see that in this study, we mainly focused on the goal of modernization to carry out the study. And we also released serial reports, Innovation 2050, Science and Technology, and China's Modernization. On this basis, because it's a long time to 2050, this report is actually divided into three stages. One is from 2007 and 2008 to 2020, which is a dozen years ago. And from that time to 2030 and 2035, and then to 2050. The timeline is highly consistent with the whole stage of national development. In 2011, we organized strategic research towards 2020. That is to say, in the near future, we should focus on the key points. In the long term, we should focus on the trend and the direction, forming a hierarchical structure. Finally, in 2050, we can form a complete research framework and the whole systematized understanding. In this process, the judgment in the near future will also impact the country's real layout. So our DIIS method was developed in this process. The so-called DIIS does not fall from the sky and come out of the head. The whole work is specifically organized by me. At that time, hundreds of scientists from more than 80 institutes of the CAS participated in the research for more than two years. I was faced with the dilemma, how to organize this strategic research and how to organize so many experts and concepts together. This forces me to think about some methods and their rules. Then in the practice, this method is gradually formed. For instance, in terms of data collection, First of all, I should decompose the problems. The problems affecting the modernization of China are decomposed into 18 fields, such as energy, resources, water, information, space, and ocean. And they are very important. A new field, biocontrol, is also included in these fields, which is also very forward-looking. After determining these fields, we should perform tracking and scanning on their dynamics. How is global development going? How is the state of development? We should also perform a quantitative analysis for data collection. Then various data of development situation are collected, which don't just include the development situation of science and technology. For example, besides the development situation of information technology and industry, global information from science and technology to industry the impact of information on society and so on, are all collected. After collection, we perform data mining and comprehensive analysis. This analysis is to review the context and logic of the science and technology evolution from the perspective of history and the future. It's about revealing regularity. Information disclosure includes the characteristics and relationship of the development in various fields internal relationship and the interaction between science and technology and economic society, which is in fact a discovery process of key value. Based on this, intelligence analysis is combined with the wisdom and professional judgment of more than 300 experts to carry out scenario analysis that is future-oriented prediction on the modernization of China in 2050. We also put forward eight economic and social infrastructures and strategic thinking, as well as relevant science and technology roadmaps. The eight strategic systems include sustainable energy and resource system, 
ubiquitous information network system, and smart grid manufacturing system. Smart grid manufacturing was put forward at that time. Now it's already a consensus. For the eight systems, such as the marine and airspace capability expanding system, roadmaps have been provided for each area. How will it develop when it comes to 2020, 2035, and 2050? Why is it a solution finally? For the need of China's modernization by 2050, we condensed 22 strategic science and technology problems that affect China's modernization. For example, artificial life and synthetic biology, ubiquitous intelligent manufacturing systems, stem cell, and regenerative medicine were all proposed at that time. And most of these problems have since become the major tasks and special projects of China. At that time, we also put forward some policy suggestions on taking the road of science and technology innovation with Chinese characteristics. These are solutions. Based on such practice in the research on comprehensive think tank problems, we proposed an inherent law, that is DIIS. As for the five requirements of think tank research, the first is ideology. It means the proposal of new concepts, ideas, viewpoints, and opinions. Think tank must have the feature of new, from concepts to viewpoints, and then provide high-quality advice and evaluation opinions. Only ideology cannot support the operation. Therefore, we propose that think tank research should be constructive and closely stick to decision-making needs. It should be based on the present and orients the future. The solution should be practical, effective, in-depth, operable, and systematic to really serve for decision-making. At the same time, the scientificity, as we repeatedly mentioned before, should be based on professional knowledge and scientific evidence by adopting a scientific method and combining qualitative understanding with quantitative analysis. We should perform comprehensive and systematic analysis for scientific verification. That's the scientificity of think tank research. As for the foresightedness, we should keenly predict the trend and the frontier direction, finding the emerging, essential, and regular things, and understanding the new situations, problems, and features. We should also propose suggestions for advanced response and systematic layout. The independence emphasizes that a think tank can't be subjected to individual and local interest interference. It must be in the spirit of being highly responsible to the country and follow the rules. The research conclusions must stand the test of people, practice, and history. The last question is about evaluation. The evaluation of high-level intellectual achievements can be divided into five aspects from the role of think tank results. The first is the aspect of development concept and strategy, which has a profound impact on the concept and the strategy of a country and an organization. This is what think tanks should first consider. For example, in the research on major issues related to human civilization, the overall economic and social situation and long-term development of the country, think tanks propose new concepts ideas, viewpoints, and strategic suggestions, which can become the consensus leading the trend of development or becoming an important scientific basis for national strategy that can be considered as a contribution to concepts and strategy. Here are some examples. The concept of sustainable development proposed by many scientists in response to various constraints on human development has been a global cognition of development after repeated research and discussion. This is the contribution of think tank scholars, not one person, but many scholars. The innovation-driven development strategy also reflects the cognition about development stages by scholars. China has transformed itself from a factor-driven country to an innovation-driven one. This is the time to implement this innovation-driven strategy. 
The strategic judgment that the world today is at the night before a new round of science and technology revolution was proposed in our research on Innovation 2050. It's a significant judgment which is important for science and technology development. This kind of judgment is reflected in new concepts and strategies. The research by think tank scholars adopted by national important documents can also be considered. As a contribution at this aspect, there is another more visible aspect. That is, research results become the scientific basis for making and revising countries' laws and regulations. For example, when revising the law of the People's Republic of China on science and technology progress, many studies by the think tank scholars provide basis of the revision. These results can be seen as opinions on the revision of laws and regulations. The proposed scientific advice and the predictions adopted by the national plans and mission deployment, and accepted by the national planning layout. The developed research methods and tools are generally used by the think tank counterparts. These are contributions from the aspects of regulations, plans, and methods. For example. The fourteen opinions on science, which has a significant role in China's science development, Chinese twelve-year science and technology plan, Innovation 2050, and May function zoning. We should recognize that different areas have varied functions, and we should follow the rules and lay out the productivity. More examples are Vision 2020. The emerging trends in science and technology, and the strategic option of China, and Delphi method developed by the Rand Corporation to integrate experts' opinions. These are all contributions in this aspect. In the aspect of system and mechanism, the proposed scientific suggestions are accepted by the country or some relevant departments. And become an important scientific basis for the system and the mechanism reform. Specifically, for example, the suggestion of building the National Natural Science Foundation of China was accepted. The Foundation Bureau established in the CAS became the National Natural Science Foundation of China two years later to support the development of natural science. Think tanks also proposed to establish the Chinese Academy of Engineering. The suggestions of 863 program, 973 program, the establishment of a national innovation system, the reform of science and technology planning system, and so on, all belong to this aspect of system and mechanism. In the policy aspect, think tanks research key issues related to the country's economic and social development. And national security and science and technology advance, and propose scientific suggestions and predictions, becoming the support for making specific national policies. The National Mid-Term and Long-Term Science and Technology Development Plan, 60 supporting policies, the Enterprise-Oriented Additional Deduction Policy, and Three Right Reform at present are all specific policies. In the aspect of measures. Aiming at major problems in innovation development, the proposed systematic solutions are adopted by relevant departments and important areas of the country, which will become a measure and action for reform and development. For example, the suggestion of two booms, one satellite, the implementation of national major projects, such as the development of high-performance aircraft engines. And the gas turbines, and the construction of pilot zones of comprehensive innovation and reform are all specific measures. So I believe think tanks should be evaluated from their roles, instead of just looking at the number of reports and articles. Evaluation of their roles can truly serve as a value guidance for think tank scholars to develop the research around the essential issues of think tank construction. In this way, we can really and continuously improve the quality of think tank construction. That's all of my report today. I hope it will be helpful to you. Thank you.
Thanks to Professor Pan Jiafeng for his wonderful lecture. Just now, Professor Pan Jiafeng systematically elaborated the logical system of the integral research and proposed some basic problems such as why, what, how, and how to evaluate about the integral research, starting from the. Evolution of think tanks and the status quo of methodology research. He proposed the problems in China's think tank research and summarized the characteristics. Furthermore, he considered the law of think tank research and provided the general idea, namely that these. In the next lecture, we will invite him to further expound on the this 3D theoretical model. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>